welcome back. At issue today, teens who have faith in God and teens who have faith in themselves. In the early 70s, only 1% of Canadians said they had no religious affiliation. Today, that number has skyrocketed, especially with young people. A third of Canadian teens don't believe in God. But that doesn't mean atheists don't believe in anything. Here to explain what she does believe is 18-year-old Jamie Garamani. Welcome to the show, Jamie. Thank you. Um, so there is that misconception that atheists believe in nothing. How would you respond? Um, I think it's just wrong yes. for people to think that because that would kind of defeat the whole atheist point of view, if you understand what I mean, yeah. because um, people view atheists as they don't believe in anything, they're, lazy, they're yeah, just lazy, too they're, lazy to go to church. they're <laughs> pessimistic, they just have a very bad outlook on life, but that's right. not really how it is, because most, most of the atheists that I've encountered with, they're actually, uh, I feel like their life is a lot more open to things. Interesting. And um, so... I want to back up a bit and ask you about the faith you were born into, the faith yeah. you grew up in. What faith did you grow up well, in? Well, originally, like technically, I'm supposed to be a Muslim. Okay. <laughs> but, I mean, growing up in a family where religion wasn't really something big. I mean, everyone had their different views. Some people didn't believe in anything. Some people, I know my grandma, just believed in God. Everyone kind of had different views on it and it changed sometimes. So, so your parents were quite open to yeah, whatever you decided? Yeah, they were really decided. open. And, um, I know that once I started, uh, you know, when I, a couple of years back when I started to really look into atheism, um, I really looked into it and I really got interested in it. And I never really cared about religion. Um, it was never uh, anything for me. Um, so from that, my parents started becoming atheists. So you became an atheist first and then you were yeah. just the opposite of what yeah. normally happens. It's opposite and now like I know um, my dad always reads all these books and they attend, you know. It's interesting because the stereotype you have of atheists is that they don't read any books and they're not interested in yeah. anything. It's about a negative thing like not believing as opposed to believing in exactly. something. Exactly. I want to ask you though when you first started to contemplate atheism as a belief system for you, what was it about it that like resonated for you? Um, so it kind of just started, uh, it was kind of a natural process for me. Uh, I just, I never really cared for religion and once I started to, you know, uh, get into my teenage adolescence mm -hmm. and you know, your mind just gets so really curious mm -hmm. and you kind of start questioning things more. And so I was questioning it and I never really believed in God. I started to think that everything, the whole idea of religion was completely preposterous. Um, so this mythical figure, this babysitter in yeah, the sky, who's going to come all down. I think it's illusion that we that religious people have. I think that's the thing that intrigues me because may, many people would find that concept of you know I'll use the term babysitter in the sky yeah. <laughs> who's going to take care of you very yeah. comforting. You know, and with respect, you know, a lot of people believe that, and that's perfectly legitimate. Yeah. Why didn't you find that a comforting thing for you? Um, I didn't. I never did because it's. It's kind of like believing in something that's not there, kind of lying to yourself, sort of, giving yourself fake hope. So I never found that comforting because why should I find something comforting that I know is not going to happen? That doesn't exist. Yeah, that doesn't exist. So you found that in scary. I found it comforting to know that I was capable of, you know, knowing that I can find comfort in other things than something that, how can, you know, something it's that doesn't intangible. exist. Yeah. So that brings me to the next question is what do you find comfort in? Um, I find comforting, uh, I find science comforting, I find really? facts, um, family, like people, all those just general things that I know exist and there's proof for it, um, I find comforting and that's what I lead towards. I don't really, I don't really believe in spirituality, I don't really have a belief in it just because I don't really care about it because I feel like if I'm going to take my time and, you know, really dedicate it to something, I feel like it should be something that I feel like I'll get improvement in myself. And things that, in terms of beliefs and, like, religion, I don't really think I can improve myself to the best of my ability. So other than comfort, the other thing people find uh, helpful about religion is it's very, and some, all faiths differ on this, but they give you very strict guidelines on how to behave, a moral code, yeah. you know, to kill is wrong, to steal is wrong, exactly. etc. So where do you find your moral code for your behavior? You're not out killing people in the streets, yeah. so clearly you have a... Um, I don't 
I don't look down on upon religion, religion, and I don't think it's, you know, like people are stupid for even, you know. It's not that because religion does bring good things. It gives you the basis of life, like don't cheat, don't lie, mm-hmm. those certain things. But I feel like that's how it should be. And religion is good for someone who isn't really, th- didn't have the chance to have an education, just someone who's unlettered. Um, so. In terms of my morals, I found I, my parents, of course. So how do you define it then? You don't look to the Old Testament for guidelines. Where do you find your guidelines? Um, for life? I find my guidelines within myself, what I feel like is right for me. Um, I just weigh out all the, um, like I guess, I don't know the word. Different ways to behave. Different ways yeah. to behave. And whatever I feel like is suitable for me, that's what I'm going to do. And sometimes you just have to... Because what I don't under, what I really believe in is that everyone is different, and religion. There's like there's the Bible, there's the Quran, there's all of these different religions, and they have the same guidelines. And what I don't understand is how can m- billions of people or millions of people who are billions. religious, yeah, believe in something that like everyone's different. So how can someone, all of them, agree towards one thing? It's, it's practically impossible for everyone to behave and, you know, follow the guidelines that religion really asks you to. Do you think there's something sort of hypocritical about that then? Do you think they're not really all following the same guidelines? Or do you know? Yeah, that's what I'm saying is that yeah. I don't, there's, there's very few people who actually religi- like practice going to church every right. week yeah. and, you know, yeah actually follow those things. That's really rare. And when that does happen, I feel like it really destroys the mind. What do you mean? Um, I feel like it destroys the mind because you kind of lose the ability to think for yourself. How does it work in terms of you taking responsibility for what you do? I mean, a lot of people, uh, from what I understand, you believe that if you give that responsibility, like for example, um, you know, there's a car accident here on the road, I'll yeah. just pray to God to help those people. I mm-hmm. mean, you would see that not necessarily as a terribly useful thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> you would choose to just go and help the person. I would choose to go. Um, I, I have, I believe that every single obstacle is a chance, it's, it's a solution. Um, so if I have an obstacle, uh, what I do is I go like, okay, this is a solution. This is an opportunity for me to find a solution for it. So I don't really, I, if I were to ever, you know, for some reason decide to pray for it, I don't think that that would do me any good because I'm waiting for hope. And I don't want to wait for hope. I want to, you know, find the solutions myself, find something that's going to work for me. Um, so that's just how I go for it. You mentioned that you don't think um, at the same time that religion is all bad, it's mm-hmm. a terrible thing. Yeah. The people who are religious are horrible people. Yeah. Explain that to I you. think, um, first of all, just to clarify, yeah. just kind of generalize it, yeah. I think al- religion is an illusion and I think God is an illusion, just, you know, and I think the reason why it's so big is because, you know, as, uh, as kids, we have our parents and they're basically our guide to life and once we grow up and we no longer have our parents we seek to God because he becomes the father figure right. so that's what God I mean, the father <laughs> yeah so no one really they feel comforting to know that there's someone watching over them um, however I don't think that our society is comp- like civilized or I guess you don't see that enough to not have religion. Which is which is my next question, mm-hmm. um, because as I mentioned at the beginning of the show and just mentioned for your segment, the yeah. the number of atheists in Canada is dramatically increasing, especially mm-hmm. amongst people like yourself, younger yeah. people. Yet you don't believe that if tomorrow everybody became atheist would necessarily be a good thing. Yeah, I don't think Why? so at all. Because I mean, I think it's, it should be kind of like a general process, and I don't. Mm-hmm. Religion for me is something, it's very personal. I don't, it's, I mean, to be talking here right now is a big thing for me mm-hmm. because it's very intimate for me. I don't, mm-hmm. <clears throat> I don't really generally go and, hey, hey I'm everyone. An <laughs> yeah, I don't, <clears throat> and I don't, you know, when someone comes to me and they try to convert you, I always try to hold and not to get upset because I think that that's completely wrong and that defeats the whole purpose. Um, 
Um, <laughs> but at the same time, you don't think that if we all became atheists tomorrow, yeah. it would be necessarily a good thing. No. So you're not out to convert everyone to no, atheists. No, no. I think <laughs> everyone should just believe in what they feel comfortable believing, even if I think it's wrong, or even if I feel like it's not something you want to some, do. Yeah, something I want to do. It is right for some people, and that's what I'm saying. Everyone's different. You can't really make everyone believe in the same thing. Right. There are people who would hear, and you referenced the Bible, the Quran, so clearly you have a general sense of some other religions. Yeah. The people who are listening right now and say, yes, but she hasn't tried Islam, or she hasn't tried yeah. Christianity. Like, uh, have you explored other religions at I, all? I mean, I, you kept saying you were indifferent to them, so I'm yeah. assuming. Um, I did go into Buddhism for yeah. a bit, and I love it. And you don't um, have to believe in God. No, Buddhists don't you believe don't. in God. Uh, so. I just like their whole idea of it. And that's what I'm saying. It's not... Religion is kind of... People get the wrong idea of it. But I think Buddhism, the reason why I like it is because it's simple. I can take a few things out that I feel like will suit me. And even if I were to read the Bible, even if I were to read the Quran, I would just not throw it out and be like, this isn't for me. I would be like, hey, this makes sense to me, so I'll take that in. Um, but I did try reading the Bible. I did try reading the Quran. Really? It just didn't interest me, so I well, did not bother. <laughs> um, in terms of your future plans, is this a faith that you think you will... I mean, you've already t converted your parents, so your parents <laughs> now declare themselves as atheists. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you think that you would... Is this an important thing for you in the future in terms of, I don't know, if you get married to somebody, should they be atheists? Would you want to raise your children atheists? No, I really? think it's all whatever the person prefers. Um, marriage, I don't, I don't really believe in marriage. Really? Um, but not getting into that. Yeah, <laughs> that's another um, show. Yeah, that's another <clears throat> story. Uh, but would you, would you only date, for example, somebody who no, was an atheist? I think, You're open I think to for me, it just... It just, the important thing is for the person to be very open-minded mm -hmm. and to accept my views, whereas I will accept their views. Um, and in terms of, like, you know, raising kids, whatever they choose. I'll always uh, have the options for them to, you know, pick what they prefer, but I don't, I, I can never, even, even with anything, I don't think it's right to, you know, force your opinion or, or influence your opinion on someone. I think that's a great place to stop. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming in and sharing your opinion with me. No problem. Thank you for your, having me. I appreciate pleasure. your time. Thank you. Well, that's it for this edition of Ad Issue for Teens. You can go to our website, iChannel.ca, to watch this entire show online. Just click on Video on Demand at Ad Issue for Teens. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook and email your comments to comments at iChannel.ca. I'm Kevin O'Keefe. Thanks for watching.